Do you have a pair of oversized sunglasses and you can't seem to find a case that will fit? In this video tutorial, I will be showing you how to take a basic pattern and resize it to fit any frame. Plus, I will be showing you two options you can try to customize your case and take it to a whole nother level. For this project, I'm using plastic jelly fabric. You can also search for transparent vinyl or full leather. I will say this though, this pattern is not suitable for fabrics like cotton or polyester unless you want to figure out how to finish the edges. To close, I used a basic snap. This is another place where you can get creative and do what you want. So if that sounds good, then you've come to the right place. Pull up and let's get started. A list of tools and supplies can be found down below in the description box. Directions. For this, I will be using a basic sunglass pattern downloaded from Etsy. First thing you do is you print out your pattern and download it to your desktop. Then what you do is you want to print all your pages or print your page and check the test square before you proceed. If for any reason your test square isn't the proper measurement, go back and check your print settings. If you follow my videos, I usually will suggest making a sample out of scrap material so that you become familiar with the pattern and you understand the construction. However, in this case, what we're making is so simple that we will be using the paper pattern as our mock-up. Start by cutting out the pattern. You're gonna cut along the outside of the black lines. If you're not good at cutting, make sure you take your time and get it as perfect as you can. A pair of sharp scissors helps to make smooth cuts. Next, fold up the bottom and use a little bit of clear tape to secure the sides. Then you fold down the flap. This shouldn't be tight. A gentle bend is good enough and then you match up all of the lines. Next, let's check the fit. I'm gonna be using a pair of standard size sunglasses like an aviator. What I want you guys to see is how it should fit. Now, if you notice, the pattern kind of has like a little pooch to it and it's not quite flat, this is correct. You wanna make sure that there's plenty of room for your sunnies to sit inside. What we want to see is even when we pinch the sides that there's enough room. Your bigger frame and drop them in. Where do you need more room? In the width, the height. Also, you wanna take into consideration when it comes to the flap, what kind of closure you're going to be using. You'll need to build in all of these adjustments to your pattern. For mine, I just needed a little bit, about 3 eighths of an inch to both the height and the width. Now, what we're gonna do is cut your pattern apart and lay it flat again. This is where we resize the pattern. The technical term for this is slash and spread. That's what pattern makers call it. The main thing to remember is that each section needs to be marked so that we can keep everything straight. So the bottom you mark bottom, left and right, and then top, left and right. Next, let's cut a few strips of paper. Now I just happened to make mine one inches wide by eight and a half inches long. And I use the scraps from the patent from the paper that we just cut. Take one of these pieces and mark a foundation line about a quarter of an inch up from the edge. Next, let's slash our pattern. We're gonna cut it the long way from top to bottom. Then take your pattern piece or one side of it and lay it exactly on this foundation line. Tape that in place. From this line, we're gonna measure up or out 3 eighths of an inch or whatever you need for yours. And then tape the remaining section to the other side. This increases the width. Now let's cut the pattern crosswise. Start with one of the middle sections. Follow the same steps as before. Take one of your strips, measure a quarter of an inch up from the bottom and make your foundation line. 
lay your pattern directly on this edge and tape it in place. Then you measure the amount of height that you need. Mine was 3 eighths of an inch. And I also suggest using a plastic ruler for this. It's just easier to see than metal. But you know, do and use whatever you have. Then you draw a line that's 3 eighths of an inch up from this foundation line. Place your other pattern piece on that side and then tape to secure. Now, this thing is very, very important for you to remember. When you fold your section up or down, depending on what you slashed, the sides have to match. Right now, they don't because you increase the height of one of the sections. So what we need to do now, because you've got both of those sections touching, we need to increase the height in the other section. Okay, so I think that makes sense. So now we're just going to go to the other section and follow the same steps that we just did. The main thing to remember about this <clears throat> going forward is that you can use this method for anything that you need to either increase or decrease. The main thing to keep in your mind is that anything that touches or connects to it has to be changed. Okay, so that's it. Now, let's just check this one more time <laughs> using our pinch method. So we're gonna put a little clear tape on both sides and then drop in the oversized sunnies. Are you good? If not, go back and make the necessary corrections and try it again. If, it, if that happens to you, don't get frustrated. It's just paper and it's easier to make your adjustments and corrections now versus after you've cut it. Now you may be asking yourself, well, why can't I just trace it and just make it bigger? You can, but it's not the proper technique or best practice. If and when you ever take on harder or more complex projects, doing things that way is a recipe for disaster. Listen, I've done it. I've made those mistakes already. And it usually happens when you're trying to move too fast and cut corners. You know, I like to think of it this way. 3 eighths is a slight change, right? Like no big deal. But if you take 3 eighths and multiply that times two sides, your pattern just grew by three quarters of an inch. And this can be hard to adjust or fix on the fly when you've already cut your material. So if your fabric doesn't allow for easy adjustment and leather normally doesn't, you will be stressed wondering why your pieces don't fit. And ain't nobody got time for that. How you apply a snap. I bought this toolkit from Amazon. It comes with a few basic colors, plus all the tools you'll need to apply the snaps are included. The first thing you do is you mark your centers and punch your holes. You're gonna punch a hole in the top flap and also the bottom. Let's start with the top flap. You're gonna need these two pieces that look like this. Turn the metal base to the smooth side and place underneath your material. Then take the tool with the point, insert that and insert that into the opening of the hardware. Hammer. Next, take the two remaining pieces and apply them to the bottom. One piece goes on the inside and sticks out, and then the other, the one with the nub, is on the outside. Then, this time you're going to take your metal base and turn it toward the pointed side. Place this under your material, use the other tool to set it, and hammer. Before you move on, just double check that everything is functioning properly and your hardware is in the right position.
boom, that's it. Done, 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 done. All right, awesome, let's move forward. Let me show you these options. Take two pieces of standard paper and tape them together. Fold this piece of paper in half. Place your pattern where it folds at the bottom and line this up with the edge of the paper. Trace your pattern. To this, we need to add a couple of things. We need to straighten the outside edge. We also need to enlarge it by an eighth of an inch and add a quarter inch of seam allowance. We're also going to be adding a grommet, so we have to take that into consideration and I've indicated that on the pattern. At first, I was gonna have the grommet stick out, but then I decided not to do that and instead shifted it to the inside corner. Write all of your information on. Next, let's take a look at the material that we're going to be using. This lavender polka dot jelly measures seven and three quarters by 13 and a quarter. If you resource this from Etsy or anything like it, make sure you make sure that you check the dimensions of your pattern first. Let's set the grommet. What you do is you follow the manufacturer's directions. Now, if you've never done that before and you need some extra directions, I actually have a video posted on how you do that. So um, it's there for you to check out if you need it. Take it to the machine and sew it. In order not to stress out the grommet, and leave some room for the sunnies to slide in and out. I stitched a few times just to one side of the grommet vertically at the top edge. Put on your hardware, split ring and carabiner. The sunnies I'm showing here are not oversized. I just want you to get a gist of how this turned out. Option two. Option two. Here are some reference images I pulled to get us thinking about possible options for the flap. Now don't be afraid to try something. Just work it out on a piece of paper. I'm going to be incorporating these cut shapes to the flap, so that's going to be my decorative element. They are sort of heavy for a single layer of this material jelly, so because of this I need to build up the flap and the bottom edge by creating a facing. Start the same as before. Tape two pieces of paper together. Make a line down the center and fold. Fold your pattern in half. Trace the outside. Figure out your flap design. Cut out half of it. Fold it in half and then trace the other half. Cut this out. I plan to use this pattern again in the future, so I transferred it to Oak Tag. So I jumped ahead and so I jumped ahead and did a little work. So now I'm going to show and talk you through some of those steps and kind of what I was thinking. The snap in the decoration takes up a certain amount of space, right? So that's indicated by the first circle. Also, I'm thinking if I need to stitch around the hardware for whatever reason, what shape would look good? And so I thought that a circle made the most sense. So you fold your piece of paper in half, or fold a piece of paper in half, and then you trace your shape. To make the facing, you want to figure out how wide you want it. Completely arbitrary. Mine, I did at about an inch. Things like this, you have to figure out on your own. Like, no one can really tell you. You just have to figure out what's good or what looks the best. Next, you take your scratch all and poke that straight through your paper down, and then every you know couple of you know every quarter inch or so you just want to poke through and trace those lines then you lift and you connect the dots this will allow you to get the exact shape that you need for your facing cut out half of it flip this over trace and cut the other side
This is how my top flap facing turned out. Now match up your centers, mark the center of your hardware, again on the bottom portion. Now let's work on the bottom facing. Transfer the markings of where you want your heart. Transfer the markings of where the hardware will match up. Transfer that center circle and also create the bigger circle. Create your facing again, just kind of, for me, I just decided to follow the same shape as the top edge. Now, as I said before, use your scratch awl and poke through the paper Then you lift that up and you join all of your lines. Cut half of it out. Fold it over and cut out the remaining half. out your fabric and stitch it together along the edges. Put on your hardware and sew up your sides. A while back I did a video on how you DIY a pair of crystal sunglasses so I decided to pull those out and I'll leave a link to that video in the description to that video in the description box in case you want to check it out. All right party people whew, that's it. Thank you so much for checking out this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. Share, comment, and like this video. We love new subscribers, so welcome to the DIY party. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.